Welcome back Trivers, so guess what? I've got another box. One of the things that I've really wanted over the last little while has been a 3D printer. It's something that I've watched many of you other YouTubers use and I thought well it'd be really good to have one of those but I didn't really want to spend the 200 or so dollars. The thing is is that these things have become so cheap now it's it's almost a no-brainer to just get one because it just speeds up so much time when you're making a little project when you can just 3D print um, something. So when I'm looking at projects that I've been doing with a little bracket that I need or or box that I need. For example, right now if I need a box to fit a circuit board in, I have to go up the road to our local store, buy a box that doesn't really, you know, isn't perfect. I've got to drill some holes for some plugs. I've got to do a whole lot of mucking around. However, if I had a 3D printer, then I could just print a box already to spec with the holes already done in it, and it's just pretty much away we go. Obviously, the problem is you have to learn how to use the 3D printer just like with a CNC machine or anything like that. But hey, it's a bit of a learning curve and it's something that I'm interested in doing. So I thought, well, hey, because of the cost has just so, um, come down so much, it, it's just, let's just get one. So hey, that's exactly what I did. So 3D printer, all in a box, let's have a look, let's open it up and let's just have a look what's inside, guys. Right, so this is how it comes. I've just opened the top of it up. That looks like the sides of it. There's some motors for the, the stiff motors for the um, Y and X and whatever else it needs. Um, and pretty much what I want to do is I'm not going to show you the whole thing about videoing it. Uh, so putting it together, I'm just going to skip straight to the end and show you it put together and functioning and what you can kind of, um, well pretty much just to that point. wanted to keep this video really short. Um, you guys don't need to really see how to put, it, put together a 3D printer. So with that said, I'll, um, I'll skip to the next part where we've put it together. So guys, this is how it is looking. It took about four to five hours to put together. Quite a long time, you watch a one hour video and it just takes a while to go through and screw things together and figure out how it, how it works. But it was it's not too difficult overall. You end up watching a video which is pretty well done and it's nice and easy. Um, there's a couple of differences between this model. This is the A6 and the A8. The A8 is potentially slightly cheaper but there's less components that are already pre-assembled. The other advantage with this over the A8, I think it is, is that this one here has a slightly higher, by about 50 mil or something, um, build area so that when you're um, doing a 3D object you've got a little bit more space to get more height. So I thought that was actually quite important so I wasn't worried about spending an extra 20 or 30 dollars on this version and it was already slightly, um, you know, some components are slightly assembled so that that's fine. Um, so I was happy with that and apart from that everything else is pretty much exactly the same as the, um, the A8. And so A6, A8 is pretty much identical apart from just a very small differences and with this one here you've got a bit more height and I really like that. Um, how it's looking, um, I've got the power supply over here. I've got some, I've got an extra cable going into the, the bottom of this unit and um, I'll show you that on the other side. Apart from that, this side looks good and if I come around here, I'll show you some print jobs in, in just a second. If I come down here, I could have done the cabling slightly better if I was to do this ever again, uh, but it, it's perfectly functional. Um, this is the cable for the hotbed, it kind of comes up and, and back down again, that's because the hotbed moves in and out. And what I've done is I've installed the MOSFET that's highly recommended to do, and that's connected to the hotbed's power, so pretty much the power comes up to the other side of this. And then this one here is much, of, I added some thick um, cable to go straight to the power supply so there's actually two sets of power that comes from the power supply one that comes in and up and around and into here and the other one goes straight to the MOSFET using the much thicker stuff nothing gets warm in fact the MOSFET doesn't even get that hot I would still say that having a MOSFET is definitely worth it and I wouldn't say that you'd need two just having one is way more than you need um, and it just takes the load and the reason to have it, it takes the, the load of the hot um, and the, the current of the um, bed rather than going through the I suppose cheap ass plugs on the side here it's you've just got it directly to the MOSFET itself so either way this is how it's looking because of the way I did the cables it did mean that I couldn't put the other black piece of plastic in here to hide all this but either way I don't really care that these are kind of exposed or shown um, because it's it's going to be in my room and I'm the only one that's actually going to see it so um, yeah that part looks really good 
Now as for some things that I've um, printed, what I've done is if I come around here, I printed this holder. So this doesn't come with it. Um, I printed this off and um, yeah, just pretty much found some on the net and then downloaded it and printed it. And it's come out really, really well. This is kind of one a bit closer up and it's it did a fantastic job actually. I was really surprised and a bit blown away, but it did a really good job. So I put that up here. I also printed this for the filament guide. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we really need it, but it it's kind of keeps the spindle from spinning and moving kind of on weird angles. So at least that being there is, is good. Uh, and the other thing that I've, so I've printed that. I did the other bits and pieces where you normally print something silly, like I printed a cat. That came out pretty well. I printed this, which is just one of the test prints that was already on the, um, is that actually going to focus? Um, that was already on the memory stick. And these things here, which are the tops, um, I printed out as well. And that's to go, I want to print them in black, but these to go up on here. I'm not too sure why it wouldn't just come with these. It's just a kind of a cap. Like some of them call it a dust cap, but it actually keeps the metal thing from moving, which is quite good. And what I also needed was I needed to print, or what I wanted needed was um, a vent for 150 mil pipe for the garage. So the, the, I've got a pipe that comes out the side of the garage and it pretty much goes nowhere right now. It's just hanging out the, the side of the garage, flapping along, just a, a pipe. So what I needed was something a bit nicer. When I went to the shops, I found some that you could buy with little flaps and bits and pieces and a nice little vent. However, they were about $70 New Zealand. It was just ridiculously priced for what it was. So I thought, well, I found one and someone that, someone that designed it obviously did it for something that's slightly smaller. So I just kind of expanded it a bit to make sure that it fitted a 150 mil pipe. And it's absolutely perfect. It's fantastic actually. Uh, now it did take a very long time to print out, uh, probably around 11 hours, 10 and a half to 11 hours. It was a long build and it's um, absolutely fantastic for what it is. Um, I'd like to learn how to use the 3D software to be able to make or the CAD software, whatever I should use. So if any of you guys have got some recommendations about that, um, the software that I should use that's simple because I don't understand CAD too much, so it needs to be simple. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much perfect. I've just pretty obviously um, just downloaded it and um, printed it out was pretty much what I did. But this is a great vent to go on the side um, and it's gonna do everything I need. You, I could actually print the second part, which is makes this go a little bit wider, longer but that's actually all I need on the side of the garage and yeah I might actually have to print another one for the another pipe but yeah so this cost me about six dollars worth of filament to print that out and about a ten and a half to eleven hours print job so about six bucks of filament and so that versus um, seventy dollars this is obviously far far cheaper and you can customize it and do whatever you like obviously the person that made this did this kind of logo thing at the, the front of it which is absolutely fine for what I need but it looks pretty cool and um, yeah the other thing is, is that I did actually play around some of the settings on this and I ended up printing it um, you can change I suppose how thick it when it prints and unfortunately I, I, I did drop the settings down a little bit so it used less filament while doing this big print job because on the screen it does show how much um, filament that does use and I did keep the spacing slightly wider than I probably should have so my next one I'll just um, use the end, up, end up using a bit more filament but either way fantastic printer I would highly recommend this one um, just because of the extra height that you can print with um, and it just with the projects that you can obviously do with it this actually takes up the, pretty much the whole bed so you can't do much wider than that but um, you can obviously certainly go a lot higher. So yeah, fantastic printer, especially for the, the money. Uh, I'd highly recommend it. And um, yeah, it wasn't too difficult to put together. So thanks again for watching guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.